Good evening. I'm Muriel Bowser. I am mayor of the District of Columbia, and I'm calling to order uh, this meeting of the New Columbia Statehood Commission. Uh, this is the first uh, meeting of the Statehood Commission for this calendar year. I would like to acknowledge all the members of the commission, and all the members of the commission are uh, present. Let me start with the, my fellow co-chair, uh, D.C. Council Chairman Phil Mendelson. Uh, United States Senator Paul Strauss, United States Senator Michael Brown, and United States Representative Franklin uh, Garcia. Uh, I would also like to note uh, that the meeting has been properly noticed and uh, the agenda items are before us. Let me uh, review the agenda. Uh, the, today's agenda is planned to cover a uh, presentation on a D.C. statehood organizational plan, uh, D.C. state statehood uh, organizational structure. When I say that, I'm talking about the statehood advisory referendum, organizational plan, organizational stru structure, and a review of the timeline, uh, as well as a discussion of the New Columbia Statehood Commission FY17 um, budget. Uh, so with that, let me turn uh, to Chairman Mendelson for any opening comments. Thank you, uh, Mayor Bowser, and uh, good afternoon to my colleagues, uh, the senators and the representative, as well as all those from the public who are here. I'm just going to make this point. The, the commission that's sitting here before all of you is a creation of council legislation a couple of years ago, where we looked at the resources that the government was putting into the statehood movement through various uh, um, avenues, such as to the office of the secretary of the District of Columbia, but also a grant uh, to the private sector that uh, I believe usually has gone to DC vote and a, a number of different strategies and it was our thinking that it would help with regard to statehood uh, if, if there was a greater coordination between the executive, that is the mayor, the legislative branch, and the three who are elected to uh, represent the citizens, the two senators and the representative, in uh, pursuing this effort. Uh, and that is how the Statehood Commission came about, the New Columbia Statehood Commission came about. So we're, we're required to meet a minimum of twice a year. Uh, I think ideally we uh, would meet more frequently, and I think that's what we're talking about today in part. And uh, we have uh, really for the first time this uh, greater coordination that you see before you uh, and the opportunity to talk about a more comprehensive strategy such as that which the mayor is laying out for us. And uh, what I uh, hope and believe will come out of this is that you will see more resources uh, from the, uh, the council and I think as well from the executive branch to assist our elected representatives in uh, pursuing um, self-determination and in particular statehood. So I'm looking forward to uh, this discussion and I think based on what the mayor's presented that uh, we're going to see quite a bit of this over the next uh, couple of months. Thank you. Thank you. Let me, Senator Strauss. Thank you very much. Uh, it's an honor to be here today with our um, okay. uh, with our governor with the chairman of our state legislature and um, with uh, our congressional delegation. Uh, I look forward to the day when we can uh, send the governor back up to the governor's office, let the chairman uh, of our state legislature preside over a sovereign body, uh, and the three of us can go over to Capitol Hill where we belong and do uh, the people's work in that building uh, instead of uh, hanging around here uh, with you state officials. Uh, that being said, we have a lot of work to do before we get there. But I'm excited to be here uh, as part of this commission. Um, come January, I will have had the privilege of serving the people for almost for 20 years uh, in office as your senator. And this is one of the most ambitious and exciting plans that we've had in a long time. Uh, some will ask, uh, we voted for statehood once, why are we doing it again? And the answer is, uh, as a friend of mine who you might have seen on TV, Jonathan Banks, has said, a lot's changed uh, in the past 30 years since we voted for statehood, um, but a lot hasn't. The people of D.C. still don't have equal rights. And I think this is important because we've had so many new citizens come to town that need to be reengaged. Uh, 
It's one thing when your vote is ignored from a referendum that took place almost 30 years ago. It's another when a vote you cast this year uh, is threatened to be ignored by Congress. Earlier today, one of our presidential candidates did something unusual in the statehood discussion. Uh, he told the truth. When asked about his objection to statehood, rather than hiding behind some historical argument, uh, he said, I just don't like that there's too many Democrats. Um, and he's supposed to be the, uh, sensible the, the sensible one. Um, we need to move this process forward. Uh, and Madam Governor, uh, in the beginning when you came on, uh, you made a commitment to the delegation that uh, with the resources we had, if we could begin to produce some results, uh, that you would there, be there behind us. Uh, I think we as a delegation have begun to produce some real results. We've taken our cause around the world and joined international organizations for unrepresented people, bringing unprecedented attention to our struggle in the global community. We've traveled around the country and enlisted groups in Iowa, Nevada, support in Hawaii, uh, where Americans are taking up the cause of their fellow D.C. residents. Your strategy will expand that to all 50 states, and we're excited for the opportunity to work with you. Uh, but we recognize that there have been issues in the past that have um, not necessarily moved this program forward. Uh, but this, hopefully with the newfound coordination between the legislative, the executive, and our delegation, we can begin a way to engage the community address those issues and move this process forward. So I want to thank you for your leadership for this bold plan uh, and the cooperation and resources that you've provided to our delegation. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Senator. Senator Brown. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, uh, Madam Governor. Uh, I just want to add to what Paul said. Uh, you know, I know there are some concerns about this plan, but I encourage everybody to hear what's going to be said today and to consider carefully what we're attempting to do. One of the problems that I've had in this job since I began is uh, a lack of things, a lack of momentum. It seems that we get some momentum and then we stop. We get more momentum, then we stop. This has the potential to not only give us a great amount of momentum, but to keep the momentum ongoing until uh, we reach our goal of statehood. We should remember that this is exactly what Tennessee did. Tennessee said, uh, we're tired of waiting for you in Congress to bestow statehood upon our, our citizens, so we're gonna come to Washington and um, um, ask you the question, the big question, are, get do we get to be equal citizens or not? I think this proposal gives us the potential to do exactly that. And we have to remember we're on a roll right now. 71% of registered voters in the District of Columbia are for statehood. Uh, we've just had victories in the courts for budget autonomy and also uh, 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 Bacon Davis. There was uh, a court ruling the other day that sided with the District of Columbia. So we're on a roll. People are starting to recognize uh, that we don't have the same rights that every other American citizen has, and that's wrong. And, and it's not people inside the District of Columbia. We've always realized that. But it's people outside the District of Columbia. So I think it's, this gives us the perfect opportunity to take our battle to Capitol Hill. And uh, I commend the mayor for coming up with this plan, uh, and I encourage everybody here to hear it all the way through before you make any decisions on uh, how you feel about it. Thank you. Congressman. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I'm just very excited that uh, we continue to find ways to fight for DC statehood. Uh, very excited to be here and be part of this movement. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, fantastic. So what, what you've heard and what I, I have certainly um, promised is that we would continue to fight for statehood for the District of Columbia, and we would explore any and all ways uh, to get there. Uh, so I, I challenged our, our team, led by Beverly Perry, the senior advisor to the mayor, who is also uh, responsible for the, the secretary's office and our efforts around statehood, uh, to work 
work with leaders around this, the city to make sure that we were exploring uh, all options. So I want to thank um, Beverly and all of the volunteers and people who have been thinking about this who have helped us um, come to, to this day. Uh, so the one uh, reason I asked Phil to uh, put this item on the agenda is because this is not Muriel Bowser's plan. Okay, this is a recommendation that I'm bringing to the Statehood Commission, uh, and it will need to not only be endorsed by all the people who care about it, but Washingtonians, period. Uh, so what people have told me, what the polls show, is that uh, we have to continue to forge a new path to get the representation that we deserve. And we know, uh, to be like all other tax-paying Americans, we need a vote uh, in the House we need two senators, and the only way to get there uh, is to become the 51st state. So that is what uh, this is about. Uh, last week on uh, Emancipation Day Eve, uh, we set out kind of a bold step and a bold challenge to all of us uh, to put this question on the ballot. And why is this time, you know, different? What's what's different? And what we know is not only what the senator just mentioned, but the, there's never never been more support among our own electorate for statehood than now. Uh, we also know that we have the, when, unlike in 2008, and a lot of us reflect on this time when we had a new president, when we had the Senate, when we had the House, we did not have a contemporary plan. We did not have the voice of the people to deliver a package all wrapped up uh, to the new president. Uh, now when we have a new president, uh, we pray that we won't have a financial collapse for the new president to fix. Uh, and we also uh, hope to have a package, um, the D.C. voters saying we want statehood. Uh, and we may even have the opportunity for a different looking uh, and sounding and rationally thinking uh, members of Congress who even in their own in their own way and we you refer to what we heard um, the governor from Ohio say today there was no logical explanation for denying 700,000 people who pay taxes in this country a vote in the Congress and so we know that now is the time uh, to make sure that is very clear uh, to the members of Congress keep keep in mind these are freedom-loving people. Uh, these are people who know uh, how our country was founded. Uh, and we want to appeal uh, to their logic and, for, and to their love of democracy. But we also want to be ready. So what uh, we will, uh, we, what we're presenting to you today is how uh, we can get an advisory referendum uh, on November's ballot. And as, as has been discussed, there are two paths uh, traditionally to statehood. That there, the first is that the council, uh, that the Congress passes enabling legislation. Uh, and we know that our Congresswoman has put such an, an act before the Congress for many, many years. Uh, the second, uh, it also uh, having been followed most recently by Tennessee, is that the, t the territory, Tennessee in that case, or us, the district, uh, would have everything all together. So the people would have voted. The people would have voted on boundaries. The people would have approved a state constitution. And the people would certify that they intend to have a representative form of government. Uh, so that is what we will ask the people of the District of Columbia to agree to uh, this fall. So getting there. Uh, uh, takes a lot of work, as I'm sure you all can imagine. And so that is what we are coordinating now. How can we work together uh, to get to the question uh, on the ballot? So what we are, what I would like to put to the commission now is, and I have circulated to the commission members some draft um, background about how, the, how we get to the pathway for statehood. And I have already mentioned the things that, that we will need to do. Uh, so here are some key elements to getting to the plan, and I'm going to ask um, by a voice vote for the voice vote for the members to agree to, um, that we will 
work toward uh, with uh, citizen participation drafting a constitution that we will convene a constitutional uh, convention uh, that we will create the boundaries for a federal district um, that we will submit to the council of the district of columbia a legislation asking for an advisory referendum on the november 8th 2016 ballot um, and so with that i want to open up the floor for any discussion among the members um, i have a, a question um, this question has been asked of me and i think that it's appropriate to address it uh, i'm not exactly sure why we need a new constitution and uh, why we need to vote on a Republican form of government. I mean, I, I guess I'm a little confused by that because we have a constitution and we've made that vote in the past. Well, it was uh, as thir at, least, at least 30 years old. Yeah, 30 um, years. It was passed in 1982. Uh, many people who live in the District of Columbia now didn't live in the District of Columbia then, and even if they did, they may not have participated in that discussion. Uh, so it's my view uh, that if we are to carry uh, to the Congress and the new president next year, that the, the Constitution should be re, re contemporary. I also think it's important to recognize that when we began that process in 1982, the home rule government was only a few years old, and we were not particularly attached or engaged to the institutions that have now governed the city for many, many years. Uh, and so the constitution that we drafted that had a, a multi-member House of Delegates, for example, gave us a very different form of government than what we have uh, now. Uh, we have proven our ability to govern ourselves with a unicameral legislature in the current form that we've had uh, for a while now. And we've taken incremental steps towards greater democracy, including the election of our own attorney general. And so the, the biggest problem with the older versions of the constitutions, and there were actually two of them, is that they don't bear as much similarity to the government institutions that are important today. Uh, we want statehood to empower and enrich the lives of our citizens, and in order to do that, we want to make the transition uh, as seamless as possible. Uh, and we know that one of the things that opponents of statehood are going to try and distract us with uh, is how much will it cost, and uh, what is it going to mean to uh, change all this stuff around? Well, we have a functioning government. The part of the government that doesn't function is the congressional interference, and that's what we want to get rid of. Uh, we have commissions that function well at our local municipal neighborhood level. We have institutions that function well really at the state level. Uh, and so what we need to do is conform our constitution to the government that exists now. And then once we become a free and sovereign state, we as the people will have the ability to amend that constitution time and time again, anytime we need to, without having to worry that those amendments will need to go forth uh, and uh, lay over in a congressional review period where any member from around the country can uh, uh, interfere with the wishes of our democratic voters. Uh, and frankly, we've had so many uh, new people come to the city that it's an opportunity to engage them in that process and in uh, the future of their community. Uh, statehood for a long time has been a, uh, a battle carried on by longer term residents. Uh, but a passion that uh, burns just as brightly in our newer residents. Yeah. And this process of civic engagement will re-engage, hopefully, both our longer residents and our newer residents uh, in a united way of moving this process forward. I'd like to add something just to sort of respond, Senator, to your questions. I think the mayor's proposal is a reasonable one. The value of this discussion here is that there are five of us and the three of you, that is, uh, the folks who are popularly referred to as the shadows, and you're kind of in the trenches on this, to uh, get your input on this. But I think it's a, a reasonable proposal. Uh, given how Congress has viewed our efforts, I don't know that we can ask too often uh, in different ways or demand too often in different ways that uh, residents of the District of Columbia need to be fully enfranchised. So I, I, I don't, 
I don't think that there's any harm in our asking again and in fact actually polishing off and updating the work that was done in 1982. Um, and it's just, it's another, it's another effort, it's another strategy, it's another push, as you said, Senator Brown. It's um, a, a renewed effort with some momentum. I think that's all to the good. And uh, I agree. If, if we all we do is we just say, well, we're going to continue with, well, we actually we adopted something back in 1982, which actually I think the council amended in 1987 yeah, or 1989. Um, if that's all we do, I'm not sure that that has as much freshness. And uh, so I think that, um, I think this, this proposal is, uh, is reasonable, and, um, and uh, I don't see a harm in it, and I do think that it's actually better than just relying on what was done a couple decades ago. I'm sold. All right, very good. So the question before the commission is if we would um, endorse uh, a plan to get an advisory referendum on the November 16th ballot. Uh, that includes uh, updating the D.C. Constitution, convening a constitutional uh, convention, creating a federal district, um, supporting legislation to the council to have the advisory on the on the ballot. Um, that is um, the question. If, is any further discussion? Discussion, discussion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Uh, the ayes have it. Uh, the next order of business is to review uh, the organizational uh, structure of, uh, of the effort. Uh, you heard the chairman talk about the new Columbia Statehood Commission, uh, which you uh, see before you, that was created uh, actually by Chairman Mendelson's initiative in a, a piece of legislation, I think, that went into effect uh, in 2020. 2014. Uh, I recommend that the new Columbia Statehood Commission be the leadership um, group uh, for uh, the uh, the, refer the referendum uh, action, um, and as such, it would be responsible uh, for uh, making sure that. Um, it, de it would develop the rules um, and it, I'm sorry, it would provide uh, leadership to the working groups that I, I am going to discuss and it would be responsible um, for making sure we have an updated uh, constitution and making recommendations to the bodies um, that I mentioned. Uh, the legal advisory committee I am going to uh, described next uh, will help and advise the commission, would advise us. And we see uh, this group as uh, members of our legal community who want to actually be the drafters uh, of the new constitution, but also work on critical questions that will impact how uh, moving the district in, into statehood would um, operate functionally. Uh, and so we will recruit members of the uh, people who want to serve on the legal advisory committee uh, to the statehood commission. Uh, we have also come up with several uh, working groups uh, that would be a part of uh, doing the very critical work that it will take uh, to get us there. Uh, the list I'm about to uh, read are suggested or recommended uh, and shouldn't be uh, considered final or exhaustive. Uh, but let me start with an all eight wards committee. Uh, this would be the grassroots uh, working group that works uh, to get citizens uh, to provide public education to residents of the District of Columbia. Uh, it would be responsible for public engagement in each of the district's uh, eight wards, uh, including uh, presenting to advisory neighborhood uh, commissions and the like. Uh, another working group would be the Map and Boundaries Committee. Um, as, of course, as part of the statehood um, initiative will be to ensure uh, that a federal district is carved out of our existing boundaries and the new Columbia boundaries um, are established. The next committee uh, would be the Rules Committee, uh, and uh, this committee would uh, be responsible uh, for uh, drafting the rules um, by which the Constitution uh, is uh, presented in a constitutional convention and voted on. 
the next committee would be the All Americans for DC Statehood, or otherwise known as the 50 State um, Committee. Uh, members of this committee would be responsible for recruiting uh, and energizing uh, a, a DC Statehood group in each of the 50 existing states. Uh, the next group would be an advocacy committee, uh, and this committee would be responsible for working with um, business groups, labor groups, national voting rights, and civil rights um, groups, uh, and would help uh, with attracting resources to the statehood uh, movement. Uh, the next committee would be the communications uh, committee. Uh, this committee would use uh, traditional new technologies uh, to uh, convey the DC uh, uh, statehood uh, initiative uh, inside of the city as well as across the nation. Uh, the next committee would be the Cleveland Philadelphia Convention Committee um, and we would seek uh, co-chairs from each of the parties for each of the major parties uh, to devise a strategy for the summer uh, conventions. So that is um, those are, uh, the, that's the organizational structure. So I wanna put uh, that uh, proposed structure on the table for any discussion. I, I wanna make a couple of suggestions. One, I'm not sure that there should be a rules committee. I think that to the extent that rules are an issue, that should be held by the five of us. And I also think uh, in the draft that you put forward, uh, Madam Mayor, that um, it suggests that each of these working groups will be chaired by a council member, and I don't think that we should um, um, not consider that um, either the senators or the representative might chair, might want to chair any of these uh, working groups. Um, so I have those two comments. Okay, I have no uh, issue with uh, removing as a suggestion a, a council member as chair and the second suggestion was I, rules. I think the rules should be kept with us. Okay any conversation around rules? Okay so the, the I would accept as friendly the incorporation of rules into the function of the statehood commission. Any objection? Without objection the rules committee uh, moves up and, and it is part of the the, um, the the function of the Statehood Commission. Um, therefore, the Legal Advisory Committee will be advising and helping with the work of, of that group. Uh, <clears throat> I also have a question um, um, about the uh, Boundaries Group, since it seems to me that that's pretty much a technical uh, issue. I don't know why we want to have a working group for that. Um, it just um, we we've actually gone over the boundaries. Um, we've had a geographer uh, reestablish the boundaries, uh, and there are some technical questions that need to be answered. But I'm not sure that do we really want a group of, especially one comprised of uh, with citizen input on what the boundaries sh should be. Isn't that just a technical matter? And shouldn't we leave it to to a geographer or, or some other technician uh, to resolve that. It, it, as, I, as I saw the committee, it, it involved some uh, assistance from the Office of Planning. Um, there are, at the time the original boundaries were drawn by the city, they, uh, they used some old surveying techniques. Yeah. Uh, and if you've looked at our mapping technology today with global satellite, uh, we've made a lot of strides. Uh, I do think that there would be some ways to talk about not just necessarily where the boundaries are because that would be statute, but right. uh, what we can do going forward to identify those boundaries because there really are two distinct parts of the District of Columbia right now. There's the National Capital Service Area where federal agencies pick up trash and have to shovel snow, uh, and then there's the District of Columbia where different sets of laws uh, apply. So uh, one of the positive aspects I thought would be how in the interim path to statehood we might use these already existing boundaries uh, to help identify and get our fellow citizens used to where the new state boundary would be and what would remain in the federal district. 
Well, let me let me add um, to that, and Senator, I might ask that we we put this one kind of uh, in a parking lot, but let's let's kind of okay. talk through it here. Uh, we do, and I should mention in the Congresswoman's legislation, she outlines with a meets and bounds description um, proposed um, boundaries. Uh, I do. I have asked uh, our one of my my staff to map out um, those boundaries. So the suggestion here is not that there needs to be dramatic uh, change for that, but put the item up for discussion. Um, the reason that there's a recommended committee in there, because there, you know, there needs to be a division of labor. Um, now, to your point, if uh, do we need a whole committee to do it? Um, it probably doesn't need to be as robust um, as the other committees. So I, I am you know, I'm not wed to, to having a committee, and I'm happy to take some any further suggestions about how this work can be done. Well, I just didn't want to make a political football out of it because there's part of Bethesda that I would really like. <laughs> so, so you know, why don't, don't we? Wanna... Um, why don't we? So, is what is, is it your recommendation that this is also something um, that the statehood commission, advised by the legal advisory team? I, I think that would be a reasonable thing right. to do, yeah. I'm going to put that on the table for uh, a vote. All those, in, uh, the senator has uh, recommended that map and boundaries uh, be a role performed by the statehood commission. Um, all those in favor say aye. 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 Okay, the ayes have it. Okay, so hearing no further recommendations, I'm going to ask for approval of the organizational structure as amended. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Uh, the ayes have it. Uh, let me move on to the third item on the agenda, which is the advisory uh, referendum uh, timeline. <clears throat> Let me start uh, first uh, before we move into um, specific dates or more specific dates. Talk about uh, how uh, the how we propose public engagement around the referendum. Um, activities. Uh, first, uh, we would have uh, the, the working groups that we uh, just described. We will be recruiting and looking for volunteers to serve on those committees. Uh, we think, it, you know, a manageable or my recommendation is that a manageable size for the committees would be about 40, but uh, that could be up, uh, up for discussion. Um, and we would host a kickoff meeting among the, the statehood commission and uh, the working groups on May the 5th. Um, the working groups would need to commit to a, uh, a timetable uh, for their work, including public roundtables, um, discussion of working group recommendations, and recommendations that would go to the commission. Uh, and those meetings would need to happen between May 5th and June of 2016. Uh, we would make a presentation of the D.C. Statehood Advisory Referendum uh, to a convening of advisory neighborhood commissioners um, by the first week of May. Uh, and uh, we would uh, need to make the presentation uh, to the council by July. Um, then the council also may elect to do its own round of public engagement. And uh, then we would uh, host before the, the, the legislation to the council a constitutional convention where a draft constitution would be discussed on um, by mid-June. June 17th is a recommended date. And then uh, the Board of Elections will may also uh, convene a public hearing on the draft language sent from the council. And that would have to uh, be done uh, by the end of July. Are there any questions on uh, the timeline? And what I'm asking members to particularly pay attention to is if, uh, with this timeline, if we could commit to a kickoff meeting, um, commit to a public engagement process for the working groups and the commission, um, commit to uh, the convening of a constitutional convention um, by the third uh, week of July, and commit to sending a piece of legislation uh, to the council um, for their consideration by that date. 
Any questions on the timeline? Exit discussion. It's aggressive. Let me just say, in fact, you just said it, that uh, this is aggressive, but it's a timeline, and I think uh, it's worth trying, definitely worth trying. Um, keeps us moving, and uh, it helps us uh, measure uh, whether we are um, being as efficient and uh, decisive as we ought to be. I agree it's an aggressive timeline, but it's uh, an aggressive effort, and I think uh, it's a cause that's worthy of uh, such aggression. So uh, let let me let me just um, also s say a word about where we are because we could take more time, um, and taking more time would mean uh, we we miss um, what I think is going to turn out to be a historic election in November, and we miss the opportunity for a new president uh, to have a complete package um, from the voters of the District of Columbia. Uh, and so what we uh, have certainly have, have laid out is, and with this new, this group um, being uh, in place, can be very helpful. Uh, we've also laid out ways uh, that we think these working groups can help spread the word and educate and take public input input um, on every aspect um, of what's before us. So with that, yes. You know, I want to add one thing it's so that everybody understands this. Uh, in the, the background information mm -hmm. that's part of your proposal, it notes that, and I think this is a very important point, uh, we had a new president, a Democratic president, in 2009, and I can't remember that far back, but I think we may have had majorities, and the Democrats, yes, supporters, did. or at least folks we presume to be supporters in both houses of Congress. But we didn't present anything new. Uh, and that's not to take away from what our congressional representative, uh, Eleanor Holmes Norton, has been doing, because she's been introducing statehood legislation in every session of Congress. But we, the local government, didn't present anything new. And key to your strategy, and I think the public needs to understand this because it speaks to why there's this timetable, is that uh, if we could get this to the ballot in November and have that referendum, then that's the strongest way that we can request of Congress and the new president. Um, so we start out the, in 2017 uh, with a new, we know there'll be a new president, and there possibly will be different majorities in the House and the Senate. We start out with a bold request, which is what we haven't done in the past, and uh, I think that's important to this strategy. Yeah, I agree. Okay. Anything else on that timeline? Okay, all those in favor of the timeline before us, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Uh, the ayes have it. Uh, so with that, I want to move on to um, the, it's listed as item five here, to discuss New Columbia Statehood Commission FY17 budget. I'm going to turn to the chairman to. Sure, and I think this could be fairly brief. Uh, as everybody knows, the, uh, the mayor's proposed budget for FY17 is before the council right now. And there is funding in it for the uh, commission, um, and more particularly for the three elected representatives who uh, are responsible for statehood issues. Uh, I think that with what we're doing today, uh, this it's, it's worth just noting for a minute that um, it, uh, the council could use a careful look by the, rep the, the two senators and the representative at what the budget needs are. Uh, and that's not an invitation to take the mayor's proposal and double or triple it, but um, as we move forward with this <laughs> plan and this strategy, uh, we ought to be looking as well at uh, what the budgetary needs are. So that's, that's really why I put this on here. I do not know if uh, uh, the senators want to, or the representative want to respond. Well, 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 thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, and I do find those comments encouraging. Uh, many of the items uh, that are going to be part of this plan uh, in some way were anticipated by the commission as part of its planning. We knew, for example, that we wanted to do outreach at the national convention, and so we set aside funds in the commission budget to make sure that we had that opportunity. Uh, we knew that we needed a, a state outreach category 
Uh, and in fact, using our budget, we have already begun uh, outreach to selected state. Our Iowans for DC statehood, our Nevadans for DC statehood. Uh, we've had interest in Hawaii and a few other states. Uh, so, uh, but but to be frank, we did not budget for a, a 50 state outreach program and there's a lot of things here that we necessarily have not done. Uh, so we welcome the opportunity to study this plan and come up with essentially what the, uh, the fiscal impact might be. Uh, and look for ways to uh, work with uh, your office and the executive to make sure that the resources are behind this effort so that in this very historic and unique opportunity, we succeed with this ambitious and aggressive agenda. Yeah, I would just add to that, that, that absolutely. Uh, I think it's been a missing element in the past, and this is an aggressive timeline. And, and really, the big liability for us is if we fail in the vote. So we need to make sure that Washington, D.C. is well educated on this issue so that when the referendum goes forward, that we can count on the 71 percent of registered voters um, who who favor statehood in coming out and voting for um, the uh, referendum. Uh, we know that there are haters out there. We've already seen a letter in the Washington Post uh, attacking the, the, the plan uh, and asking what it will cost. So we know there's going to be opposition, and we need to be prepared for that opposition. And uh, in addition to the outreach to 50 states and some of the other things that um, uh, the, the, that uh, we've got here, uh, the outreach in the city, we're going to need additional funds to do that. So I think it's appropriate to look at that. And thank you, uh, Councilman uh, uh, Chairman Mendelson, for bringing that up. I think it's a very important element. Okay, so let me also uh, to to the members of the committee ask for support, some staff support. Uh, the executive will provide staff support for each of the agents, for each of the working groups. Uh, we also would like to have um, the statehood uh, delegation provide support and the members of the council uh, provide uh, staff support uh, as well to assist with um, staffing um, needs for each of the working groups in the short turnaround uh, time uh, that they have. I also wanted to put on the table, and we can discuss this after, uh, a schedule of meetings of the commission um, during this time period where uh, many decisions will, will have to be made and we can circulate with no objection um, a, pro, a, a schedule that will um, help us hit um, our, our points as well. I did want to advise that um, I, I asked uh, the, the senior advisor uh, to, and during this week we have been doing a lot of outreach to groups that in some cases the government um, has funded with grants, in other cases they've just been doing the, the hard work out there period around um, statehood uh, for or a, uh, a discussion this afternoon about how we can populate um, the working uh, groups as, as we move forward uh, as well. We will create a, uh, if, uh, have we already created the website? Yes, it's up, hello? Yes? Okay. So it is at statehood.dc.gov um, where we will put all documents related to um, the commissions and I'm sure we can connect with the council, uh, Mr. Chairman, as well um, for all of the documents related to the commission's meetings um, and the working group's meetings as well. Is there any, um, any further business? Okay, well thank you Mr. Mr. Chairman and thank you all. So um, because there's no further business, we will uh, adjourn on this meeting. I'm not sure what time it is. It's 425.